On an ordinary day on September 11, 2001, a tragedy took place in New York City. A terrorist attack was a catalyst for disaster. The Twin Towers came blazing down as the people around it tried to offer a helping hand to those who were injured or killed. On the days of and the days following 9-11, many of the people affected lived miles away and obtained exposure by inhaling the polluted air. Even today, people are still being impacted by the detrimental crisis that took place on that day. Past events have and will continue to affect the health of people and the environment around them. When we think about air pollution, we usually think of the major contributors like aerosols, the burning of fossil fuels, and greenhouse gas emissions. We are trying to combat their negative effects and come up with clean energy solutions. But what about the chemical and debris particles that are lingering in the air from that disastrous day? How do we face the pollution in the air that we don't even know we are exposed to? There has been a growing concern over the health effects arising from the September 11th attack on the financial district in Lower Manhattan. During the collapse of the World Trade Center, building materials, electronic equipment, and furniture were burned. Fumes and small fragments of rubble swept the entire area. Following the attacks, dust from the burning buildings continued to fill the air of the site. Ordinary winds and breezes spread the harmful particles to the surrounding area. To this day, there are growing numbers of individuals who are reporting symptoms of the ground zero respiratory illness. When the Twin Towers collapsed, a giant cloud filled with chemical waste had permeated through the city, exposing thousands of people to cancer-causing agents. The toxic plume particles were as small as one-seventh the width of a human hair, which means inhalation of these chemicals was unavoidable. According to the EPA, the level of dioxins emitted from the burning debris were the highest ever recorded in the world at one place in time. Dioxins are known as carcinogenic chemicals, which means that they may cause cancer in humans. This highly toxic chemical can cause reproductive and developmental problems, as well as damage the function of the endocrine system. This is only one chemical that was found in the one million tons of dust that surrounded Manhattan, all of which contained a complex mixture of toxins whose effects are still being determined. Political implications influenced the way that administration had dealt with the detrimental environmental impacts. Immediately following the attacks, the Bush administration had declared a war on terrorism. They also encouraged people to go back to work in fear that if the financial markets remained closed, the economy of the U.S. would collapse. Despite the wreckage from the buildings, the thousands of bodies stuck under debris, and the severe trauma of the attacks, the administration made it clear that their environment was safe. But was it? Several environmental officials, such as Christy Todd Whitman, the head of the EPA, had endorsed the notion that people should go back to work. The Environmental Protection Agency, as well as other health organizations, stated that the air was safe to breathe and that the water was safe to drink. Despite these reassurances, officials knew that through their minimal testing, the air and water were not as safe as they had claimed them to be. Further testing revealed that the chemical plume had released a concoction of deadly toxins such as asbestos, mercury, benzene, lead, and other heavy metals. Despite this knowledge, officials undermined the potential environmental and health impacts to the people of New York City. The chemical industry has an abundance of wealth, much of which they are encouraged to use to promote political campaigns and elections. The industry pays politicians millions upon millions of dollars to allow the usage of chemicals and products, despite the detrimental impacts that they can have on the environment and human health. In short, our leaders have been misguided by the chemical industries to advocate for business instead of health. We need to inform our government officials of the importance of health and what really poses a threat. It is our jobs as citizens to bring power back to the people and take matters into our own hands. We are citizen stakeholders for our health, the health of our children, and the world around us. We are all beings on this planet. That means we have the right and responsibility to advocate for safe environments with clean air and water. We encourage you to become an advocate for change, to pave the way to a better future for our environment and human health.